Good morning, algebra students. So today we're going to be covering the unit 10 activity. Um, so let me uh, share my screen with you and we'll go over that right away. So hopefully you have it open already. It should look like this. Let's talk about the introduction here. Statistics is a widely used branch of mathematics. We use statistics to analyze the and predict outcomes from data. Data can be represented in various ways, such as tables and histograms. We can interpret and compare data with measures such as mean, median, interquartile range, and standard deviation. In this activity, you'll use statistics to explore relationships and make predictions related to data collected by the leaders of an indoor rock climbing club to help them make budget decisions. So hopefully you already know uh, some of this from going over the unit, but basically statistics is like what they said here. And hopefully you know what some of the, at least some of these are mean, median, interquartile range, standard deviation. Um, if not, that's fine. We'll go over it anyway. So on to page five, it says, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The members of a rock climbing club can use an indoor rock climbing facility anytime they wish as part of their club membership. As it creates a new budget, the club decides to investigate how often the members use the indoor climbing facility. Then it will decide whether to increase the budget for this facility. Manuel and Gretchen are in charge of gathering this information. So they survey the members of the club. Each person will administer the survey to 15 randomly selected members and record how many days in the past month those members use the indoor facility. Their data is shown in the table. So you can see um, Manuel's and Gretchen's data. Basically, they each asked 15 members from the club, how many times have you been to the rock climbing facility in the past month? So Manuel asked someone, that person said, oh, I've been there three times in the last month. The next person says six times in the last month eight times, 11 times. So these are uh, different people's responses, basically. Gretchen did the same thing, asking 15 different members of the club how many times they've been there in the past month. Um, so yeah, that's the data there. All right, now, use the graphing tool to create a histogram for Gretchen's data. Use eight bins for your histogram. So for this, make sure you clicked on the histogram right here and we will and then go to data set here and then you're simply going to take gretchen's data which i wonder uh, looks like we can so take gretchen's data and you're going to type those values in right here and for each data point put in the number so the first number is 22 you see that so 22 and then just do comma space all right so between each uh, piece of data, you're gonna put a comma and a space. So four is the next one. Seven, eight, 12. Seven, eight, 12. 15, 10, seven. 15, 10, seven. Um, Nine, six, thirteen, three. Nine, six, thirteen, three. Eight, ten, ten. Eight, ten, ten. You should have fifteen pieces of data because again they asked fifteen people. So let's just do a double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So then you just press plot and you get this histogram here. And that, and that should be that. So once you have your histogram, you're done with that. Now, as you can see, <clears throat> a lot of the data is kind of jumbled around this spot right here between like six and 12, or maybe even six and 14, you see. You got one person way over here. Um, that's the one person that went 22 times to the gym. And there you go. And gives you this data too. So, um, men and max frequency, 
the mean, which is the same as the average, the median standard deviation. Okay. So now the shape of Gretchen's data can be described as, notice it kind of has this main arch to it, but it has a value way over here. So we call that, if there's value way to the right like that, we call that skewed. So in this case, the data is skewed to the right. So it's mostly here, but then there's data way over here, so it's skewed to the right. If there was a data point way over here, and not if the data point was way on the other side, that'd be skewed to the left. Um, so it's skewed to the right because of this outlier. So skewed right. Because of this, the now when there's outliers involved in a, in a set of data, you generally don't want to use the mean as your central tendency. You want to use your median. So in our case, because of this um, skewness and basically because of the outlier, we'd rather use the median than the mean. So when there's outliers involved, we prefer to use the median generally. So because of this, the median would be best measure of central of center for this data set. The actual value for the best measure of the center is nine. So this is the median right there, nine. Okay. Determine the mean, median, standard deviation, and interquartile range for each data set. Use the graphing tool to determine the value of the standard deviation. Okay. So we need to find the mean. For, for Manuel's data, we need the mean and standard deviation. For Gretchen's data, we need, there, give us the mean. We already know the median. We got that earlier, which is nine. Um, <clears throat> and we need to find the interquartile range. We'll talk more about this in just a second. But let's, let's take a look at Manuel's data. So Manuel's data, we need to find the mean, the standard deviation. Now to find that, you can just go to this graphing tool here. So click on that, should take you to this. And you already have Manuel's data here. And you have Gretchen's data here. So you can see Gretchen's histogram here and Manuel's histogram here. So, and it gives us the information we need. So uh, Manuel's mean is eight, the median eight, Standard deviation, 3.14. So the mean was 8, median 8. Standard deviation, 3.14. And for Gretchen's data, that gives us that information too, but we already knew that stuff. You see the median 9, standard deviation, 4.69. Now the interquartile range, that they, they didn't give us that information, but we can figure it out. So how do we find the interquartile range? Well, to find, to find the interquartile range, you wanna list the values of the data from least to greatest. Um, just like you're finding the median, you'd wanna list the values from least to greatest. Okay, so this is Gretchen's data. I already writ, wrote it all down. Um, pause the video, take a moment to write that down as well. As you can see, the median, the median is the middle value. Now, since we have 15 values here, the median um, would be this nine here, which we already knew that. We knew the median is nine from uh, the histogram. So here's our median, put an M here, capital M for median. Now, to find the interquartile range, what we need to find is what's called the first quartile and the third quartile. Now to find the first quartile, what we do is we look at this uh, subset of data points. So the lower, the lower half of the data points. And so I want you to imagine that only this half exists. And what we do is we find the median amongst this lower half. So what would be the, just pretend this is all the information, what would be the median in this group? Well, um, what you could do is cross off the lowest and the highest, lowest and the highest, lowest and the highest, and that leaves us with the median of this group. Um, so in our case, this group 
is this. So that's our Q1 or quartile one is what we call that Q1. Same idea over here, we wanna find Q3, highest, lowest, the middle value is what we're looking for. Right here, it's 12. So that's what we call Q3. Q3, right here. All right, now the inner quartile range, sometimes shown with just I, Q, R, the inner quartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So it's the range between the quartiles. So that's why it's called the inner quartile range. So in our case, that's 12 minus seven, which is five. So for Gretchen's data, the inner quartile range is five. So what is the inner quartile range kind of tell us? It kind of tells us the spread of the values. So the standard deviation and interquartile range, those two values tell us the spread. The bigger these numbers are, the more spread out the data is. So as you can see, uh, both the standard deviation and the interquartile range are higher for Gretchen than it is for Manuel. So meaning that Gretchen's data is more spread out than Manuel's. Again, the standard deviation and interquartile range tell us how spread out the values are. The higher those numbers, the more spread out they are. Gretchen's data is more spread out than Manuel's. <clears throat> and you can kind of see that from the histograms as well. There's more spread here than here. Here it looks like everything's kind of centralized in Manuel's data, but in Gretchen's data, it's more spread out. Complete the statement comparing Manuel's and Gretchen's data. Select the correct answer from each drop-down menu. Gretchen's data's values are more spread out, lie closer together than, or in the same shape as Manuel's data. What do you think? So uh, are Gretchen's data more spread out or less spread out or the same Ma than Manuel's data? values because the standard deviation and in quartile range are larger for Gretchen's data, right? The standard deviation and inner quartile range are larger than for, for Gretchen than they are for Manuel. See if you can figure out what goes here. I kind of already explained it. Okay. Part E, remove the outlier from Gretchen's data set and recalculate the mean, median, standard deviation, and interquartile range using the graphing tool to visualize the data. Okay, so let's go back to here. And for Gretchen's data, we're gonna actually take out the outlier. So the outlier being 22 in this case. So we're gonna delete that value and replot it. So now you can see it's kind of more symmetric, right? It looks a lot more like Manuel's data. See, Manuel's and Gretchen's data look a lot more similar now that I took out the outlier. So, and let's take a look at the information from it. So you can see the median, it went from, uh, sorry, the mean uh, before was, what was the mean before? The mean before was 9.6, and now it's 8.71. The median was nine, but now it's 8.5. And the standard deviation was 4.69, and now it's 3.31. So you see all those values went down. The mean, median, and standard deviation all went down when we took out that upper um, outlier that was skewing the data. So, you, so, Let's go ahead and write some stuff here. Which statements are true about Gretchen's adjusted data set? So now it's not skewed anymore, right? It's not skewed like it used to be. Now it's a lot more symmetric. The data is approximately symmetric, we'll say. 
Now, what happened to the standard deviation? Well, the standard deviation went down, right? So the spread of the values went down. So the spread of the values are closer to the spread of Manuel's data now, once we take out that outlier. Is the data skewed left? No, it's more symmetric. The center moved closer to the center of Manuel's data set. So did their means get closer together? Uh, yeah, they did, right? The means used to be um, 9.6 and 8, but now it's uh, 8.71 and 8. So yes, the means got closer to each other. So the centers moved closer to Manuel's data set. Did the center move farther away? No. The spread of the values are farther away from the spread of Manuel's? No. Their spreads are more closely um, alike. That's what this means. Okay. Part F. The club will base its decision about whether to increase the budget for the indoor rock climbing facility on the analysis of its usage. The decision to increase the budget will depend on whether members are using the indoor facility at least two times per week. Use the best measure of center for both the original data set to determine whether the club should increase the budget, assume that there are four weeks in a month. If you think the data is inconclusive, explain why. So let's look at Manuel's and Gretchen's centers again. For Manuel, the, both the mean and the median are eight. So his center is at eight for sure. For Gretchen, we decided that the median is a better use for center because of the, it was skewed at the outlier, remember? So if Man, the people Manuel sur surveyed um, said that they have an average of eight visits per month and Gretchen, uh, her center is at nine per month. So should they increase the budget? Well, it says if they, they should increase the budget if the facility is used at least two times a week. So remember two times a week, well, that's eight times a month. So if the members are using it eight times a month on average, then yes, we want to increase the budget. So I would say something like, yes, they should increase budget because um, both eight from Manuel and nine from Gretchen have centers um, are at least So both eight and nine are both at least eight, right? Because they're saying um, basically if it's used eight times per month, that's at least twice a week. So um, eight times per month is equivalent to two times per week. Okay. Um, so yes, they should increase the budget because the members are using it at least two times a week on average. Okay, um, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, if you still need help um, with this, you know, feel free to email me and we can set up an appointment or I can just answer your questions through the email, that's fine too. Okay. Well, with that being said, um, good luck with uh, answering that. Feel free to, once you're done, turn it in and I'll go ahead and grade it. And um, I will see you guys next time.